welcome to all students today in this video lecture we are going to see what is mean by errors in chemical analysis so we have already studied in brief uh, what is mean by error in second year bsc now we are going to see in deep because this is most uh, important topic in a, any kind of analysis so we are going to see in detail errors in chemical analysis this course is mostly designed for the graduate students and postgraduate students the most of the uh, notes we can say are taking taken from this uh, tyvc book by this sojourner prakash okay so error is nothing but uh, any uh, discrepancies found in measurement and the final results so any discrepancy found during the measurement is known as or is called as uh, error a uh, aim of any chemical analysis if you say if you see what is the fundamental aim of any chemical analysis it is to obtain an experimental results that are reliable that are reproducible and accurate and accurate so this is the aim of any chemical analysis that analysis can be a quantitative analysis that analysis can be an quantitative analysis so if you see the aim it is always that analysis should be reliable that analysis should be reproducible that is precise and it must be a more accurate that means the error should be a minimum possible unfortunately every measurement unfortunately every measurement although carried out in a systematic way however you are carrying it out with a systematic manner with a control manner with a perfect following of the sops often the measurements remain susceptible to some degree of uncertainty so some degree of uncertainty is always there and thus the error is always there in any measurement so in a way we can say there are errors in any chemical analysis our aim is to minimize the errors our aim is to recognize them our aim is to account them to rectify or our aim is to do the statistical analysis of that error so that we can definitely sure about particular error so for that we need to understand what is mean by accuracy because accuracies are always expressed in terms of the errors so when we talk about error we talk about the accuracy of the method so accuracy of any method is defined as the degree of exactness what is mean by accuracy it is a degree of exactness how much you are near to the true value how much you are near to the true value for example in this image this is a true value and whenever you hit here or here outside that particular center it is said that you are not following the accuracy so whenever you hit at the center it is said to be have a good accuracy that means accuracy defines the degree of exactness how exactly you are giving 
uh, right data how exactly you are getting a, a particular measurement uh, how exactly you are getting a particular results that means uh, measurement should be near to its accepted value or it is theoretical or true value that means you should be near to the exactness near to the accepted value near to the theoretical value uh, which is called as a accuracy now there are various ways of expressing accuracy there are various ways of expressing how to express accuracy is very important because we know what is accuracy now it is a exactness or, or it is a nearness 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 to the measurement to its accepted or theoretical or true value right so now we know but how to express this accuracy because we cannot do a vague statements we need some a scientific method by which we can express the accuracy so for that there are various ways which in which the accuracy of measurement can be expressed first is the absolute error absolute error so accuracy can be expressed in terms of accuracy uh, absolute error the absolute error can be defined as the numerical difference between a measured value and accepted or true value it is simply a numerical difference between major value and accepted value what is the numerical difference that we have to calculate so numerical difference between major value that is the experimental value and accepted or true value so this major value is nothing but a uh, experimental value it is an experimental value so e that is absolute error is equal to xi minus xt xi minus xt where is xi is an experimental or major value and xt is an accepted or true value xt is an accepted or true value smaller the deviation greater is the accuracy so if you have a small precision small precision doesn't mean a, a, a lower precision i am talking about a deviation if you have a low deviation that means you are you are getting a more accuracy so deviation deviation means if you are measuring a multiple uh, values if you are getting multiple values from multiple experiments or measurements if you are getting uh, results which are more reliable more close from one another then it is called as a smaller the deviation small deviation and it is always considered as a more accurate in terms of uh, accuracy it doesn't mean it is always the same that means it doesn't mean if you are getting a, a low deviation always it will mean accuracy it doesn't um for that there are various other parameters we are going to see in next video the absolute error e may be positive or negative for example if you have a uh, experimental value is smaller than the true value then it will become a negative value that is error will be negative uh if you are experimental value is higher or greater than the true value then your error will be a positive 
and if it is the same then the error will be a zero so there will be no zero in case of if there is a no difference between experimental value and true value right so these are some uh, basic uh, terms used to express the accuracy so absolute error is one of the way another way is um, relative error another way is to use a relative error now the value of x that is x uh, i the value of x y that is the experimental value itself is subject to a lot of uncertainty most of the times if you see the experimental uh, sorry the value of x t that is a true value sorry true value uh, is itself subject to a lot of uncertainty that means your accuracy or your error is depend upon the true value and if there is a uncertainty in true value itself then it is it becomes very difficult to find out the accuracy and hence in strict sense if you see accuracy can never be determined accuracy can never be determined because the value xt that is a true value is most of the time subject to uncertainty and if xt is having a uncertainty it becomes very difficult to find the accuracy so in that sense it is uh, very difficult to get accuracy determined correctly in the in the strict sense if we want to say now a relative error is another term used for the expression of the accuracy it is the ratio of absolute error it is the ratio of absolute error to the true value the ratio of absolute error to the true value is called as a relative error this is another method method to express the relative error so relative error is equal to absolute error divided by true value and into 100 so if if you want to find out relative errors in in terms of in terms of percentage then this formula can be used that is relative error is equal to absolute error divided by true value into 100 that is a relative error is equal to xi minus xt that is a absolute error that we have seen divided by xt is a true value into 100 so this relative error can be expressed as a percentage that is parts per 100 or it can be expressed in terms of parts per thousand or parts per million sometimes parts per billion also so relative error in percent is we already have seen that is x minus xt divided by xt that is absolute error divided by true value into 100 relative error in parts per thousand you have to just multiply by 1000 to this relative error term that is absolute error divided by true value that is x i minus x t divided by x t into 1000 if you want to find relative error in ppm then you have to multiply by 10 to 6 so this becomes a ppm that is a parts per million that is a relative error in parts per million most of the time the relative error is expressed in terms of parts per 100 that is a relative error in percentage now in order to understand what are the errors we have to classify them so that we can easily understand the errors so if we want to classify that is a types of errors if you want to know what are the types of errors we have to classify them so depending upon the ease of finding the error depending upon the ease of finding the error there are two types of errors that is a determinate error or it is also called as a systematic error 
or another one is indeterminate errors that is a random error these are also called as a random errors okay so determinate errors so these are the errors which can be determined so we can determine them we can find out the values so which causes can be located so sources of this error can be located and which can be rectified under suitable conditions so we can rectify also we can rectify also so they have a definite value that is why we can rectify that is why we can locate otherwise if they have not a definite value we cannot easily find the sources or causes so they this determinate errors have a definite value and are of the same sign and magnitude for replicate measurements if you see a replicate measurement and you will see this kind of errors have the same signs so it will repeat if if it in case we are getting repeated results repeated errors so the magnitude and the sign of this errors will be the same for different replicates hence are also referred as a systematic error that's why these are also called as a systematic errors okay now the second one is indeterminate error second one is a indeterminate errors so indeterminate errors are those which cannot be which cannot be easily determined so indeterminate that means you are not able to determine that so you cannot uh, easily determine such uh, errors they do not have a definite value they also do not have a definite value they do not have a definite value indeterminate errors arise in measurement due to the causes over which the analyte has no control so if you want to see what are the causes indeterminate errors are out of the control